Yesterday, Saraji explained how the Nama Rupa are related to each other as cause and effect. Saraji gave an example where the mind is the cause and the Rupa materiality the effect by giving the example of sitting down from standing position. Saraji explained how one discerns the Nama Rupa by noting sitting down as an example and showing that one discerns cause and effect by noting sitting down. Based on this example, one can also understand other examples where the intention is the cause and the activity is the effect. So one should note that in other examples as well, whereas the intention is the cause and the actual activity is the effect, it will be the same. By noting Respectfully, meticulously, at the moment of sitting, one discerns the Nama Rupa, cause and effect. And it goes the same with standing up from the sitting position. Before one stands up, when one moves the hand, stretches the hand, one should be mindful of all these movements. So when the when moving, shifting one's position, when one is changing posture from sitting, about to sit up, about to stand up, when one leans oneself on the head, the weight of the body shifts onto the hand, becoming heavier and heavier. So the intention is the cause, heaviness is the materiality, which is the effect. And also, when one has to Stand up, the weight goes into the feet and the, there is the intention to stand up, the leg stretches layer by layer, the body is lifted up and up and one should be mindful of the standing where the body is lifted up and up until the whole body stretches and comes to the standing position. So one should be mindful of all these steps. When standing, one should be mindful of the whole body standing, noting it as standing, standing. And when one arranges the clothes, one should be mindful of arranging the clothes. And then, when one is ready to do the walking, one has to keep the hands collected at the front, or one has to keep the hands collected at the back. And when one does the walking meditation, one has to be mindful of the steps, right step, left step, and when one is doing the three steps, there is the intention to lift, lifting of the foot takes place, and there is the intention to move, moving of the foot takes place, intention to drop the foot, and dropping of the foot takes place. 
One should be mindful of every step, lifting, moving, placing. Just as when sitting down from standing position, the intention is to cause the heaviness, stiffness in the sitting is the materiality that is the effect. By understanding this example, one also understands other activities such as bending, stretching, or standing up from sitting position, opening and closing of the eyes, blinking. In all these movements, they are the Nama Rupa, where the intention is the cause, the actual movement is the effect. So these Nama Rupa are arising as cause and effect, like a chain, and one understands clearly by being mindful of all these activities. Discerning that there is only the Nama Rupa as cause and effect, one understands that there is no creator. And the Nama Rupa are not created by the creator. What really arise are the cause and effect. By practicing according to the guidance and instructions, one understands very clearly through one's own practice. Discerning the Nama Rupa cause and effect, one will not believe in other things that do not really exist. What really exists is the intention, which is the Nama, the cause, and the actual movement which is the materiality, the effect. There is no creator. Kattu Kamyata, meaning that there are just the intention and the movement, there is no creator. Isra Nimana, the wrong view, believing as creator, will be removed. In Karaka Diti, the wrong view that the world is created will also be removed. There is no creator that is creating animate and inanimate things. In this way, one removes the doubt and uncertainty by discerning the Nama Rupa and cause and effect. By discerning the Nama Rupa, cause and effect, clearly one understands that there is no self, there is no creator, one removes the wrong view momentarily. But when one becomes a Sotapanna, one removes the wrong view totally to the point of no return. By discerning cause and effect, one weakens the wrong view so that wrong view is getting weaker and weaker. And at the stage of attaining Sota Bhati Maka, the first path knowledge, one totally removes and abandons wrong view. So at the stage of discerning cause and effect, one weakens the wrong view, one removes the wrong view just momentarily and only by attaining the first path knowledge, one totally removes the wrong view to the point of no return. Uncertainty and doubt is also removed to the point of no return. By being mindful of every activity, in detail, one understands Nama Rupa, cause and effect, very clearly through one's practice. And to the yogi who practices 
according to the guidance and instruction, Yogi attains the knowledge into Nama Rupa, cause and effect, even within a few days. And Yogi should be endowed with the quality, Sova Sasata, to learn, uh, to be taught very easily as the person follows the guidance and instruction. So it is very important to be endowed with the quality of being taught easily. As one does not discern the Nama Rupa, cause and effect, there is the wrong view of Jiva Atta, individual soul, and Brahma Atta, supreme soul. And they believe that Brahma Atta, supreme soul, is governing and controlling animate and inanimate things. And they believe that everything has to follow according to the control of the Brahma Atta. And they believe that there is one and only one Brahma Atta. When sitting down from standing, by being mindful of it, one can discern the Nama mentality that is creating the sitting down. There is this series of intention to sit and the actual sitting down. The series of intention to sit is creating the sitting down. So there are series of mentality that are creating the sitting down. And also in the sitting down there involves discomfort, unpleasant feeling, and so on. As the other people believe that there is no creator, uh, sorry, as the other people believe that there is the creator, the creator is neither sukha or dukkha. The creator does not have any happiness or suffering. And what they believe to be is so much apart from what really exists. In the sitting, the intention is creating the sitting. The intention is the cause and the sitting is the effect. If there is the intention to sit, sitting takes place. If there is no intention, then no creator can make the person to sit. If there is the intention to stand up, standing up takes place. No creator can stop the person from standing. The Nama Rupa are arising as cause and effect. They are instances whereas the Nama is the cause, Rupa being the effect. They are instances where the Nama is the cause, Nama is the effect. In the surrounding, there are many sensual objects, visible sights, the sounds, smell, taste, and touch. And in the body as well, there are many objects. When an object arises, then the mind is adverted onto the object. There is an example. A person is subject to visible sight, such as a show in a when when a person is watching a show, there is the visible sight. When the people are dancing and singing, 
There is the visible sight as well as the music that is the sound, where there are also fragrance. And sitting down in a sofa. So at that instant, there are the visible sight, sound, smell, fragrance. Also, when eating, there is also the flavor. And the touch, but based on what the person is interested in, the mind goes on to the object. The mind only takes one object at a time. Even though there are various objects, if the attention is on the flavor of the food, then at that very moment. One is not knowing the visible sight, or the smell, or the sound. So in this way, when the attention is on the flavor of the food, at that moment, the mind is not on the sight or hearing. Or the nose, or the touch. So, according to where the manasikara, according to where one's attention is adverted to, one will cognize the object where the attention is adverted to. The attention. Shifts from one object to another, and one will be aware of the object that the attention is adverted to. So the consciousness inclines onto the object. The consciousness is adverted onto the object. Because the mind is adverted onto the object due to manasikara attention, then the mind cognizes the object. So, based on where the attention is adverted to, the mind cognizes the object. And by being mindful of the object. By noting respectfully, meticulously, one will understand the nama cause giving rise to the nama effect, and one will understand clearly by being mindful. As the yogi is doing the sitting meditation, noting rising and falling of the abdomen. As well as other objects, as being taught, there is the object and the noting mind. But as one is noting rising, falling, but if there is a loud noise, the attention goes towards the loud noise. So his or her attention. Is shifted from the rising falling to the loud noise. The mind goes onto the new object because the mind is adverted onto the new object. The attention, the mind goes onto the new object. So this is the example. Whereas. The attention, manasikara, is being the cause. The mind, nama, is the effect. And also in the body, sometimes there arises itchiness. So the itch arises at one place. Yogi is noting the itch, and when the itch arises at another place, then The yogi's attention is shifted onto 
the second itch. And when a third one arises at another place, the attention goes on to the third itch so that yogi has to shift his or her noting mind onto the third itch. So it is very obvious when the yogi has to switch his or her attention onto the new object that arises. And here also the attention, Manasikara is the cause and the mindfulness, the mind is the effect and the noting mind comes to know the new object. So to the yogi who knows respectfully this example will be understood very clearly. The noting mind is shifted due to the manasikara, the attention. And manasikara is compared to the rudder of the ship. So when the ship needs to move in a straight in a straight uh, line, then the rudder should be straight. But if the ship needs to be turned, the rudder has to turn in the direction that the ship has to go. Another example is the steering in the car. So if the car needs to go straight, then the steering wheel needs to be uh, kept in the normal position and if the car needs to be turned one has to turn the steering in order for the car to turn. So this is the example the rudder of the ship or the steering of the car is compared to Manasi Gara. So in order to advert the mind onto the object Manasikara, the attention, is turned towards the object so that the mind takes the object one after another. So this is very obvious that Manasikara is the, co- uh, is the cause and the noting mind is the effect. And by being mindful, by noting respectfully, meticulously, one will understand this nama cause giving rise to nama effect. And one will understand through one's own practice. The example where the attention is the cause, the mind being the effect, is the example of nama cause giving rise to nama effect. And there are instances whereas the rupa materiality is the cause, nama mentality is the effect. When there is rising and falling, noting rising and falling with aim and effort, the rising of the abdomen and the noting mind arises in pair. At times when the rising disappears, the noting mind that knows the rising will not arise. Only if there is the object, the noting mind that knows it will arise. When falling disappears, the noting mind that knows the falling will not take place. Rising of the abdomen is the rupa, which is the cause. The noting mind that knows it is the nama, that is the effect. When rising disappears, the noting mind that knows it will not take place. In the beginning of the practice, breathing in and breathing out is gross. Rising falling is also rough 
and growth. So one does not need to make much effort as the rising falling is very clear. But the breathing becomes subtle and subtle. As the breathing becomes subtle, rising falling also becomes subtle. The mind that is aware of the rising falling also becomes subtle. When the breathing in and breathing out become very subtle, it happens that the rising falling no longer takes place. If there is, if rising falling does not manifest, the noting mind that knows rising falling will not take place. Because there is the intention to breathe in, breathing in takes place and rising of the abdomen arises. If there is no intention to breathe, breathing in will not take place and rising will not take place. If there is no rising, the noting mind that notes the rising will not take place. If the object is very clear, then one will see it clearly. But when the object becomes dim, one needs to take a closer look. So when the object becomes subtle, one needs to know the object with a strengthened mind so that one will be seeing the object clearly. When one is moving quickly, the breathing is gross, especially when running, the breathing is strong. But during the sitting meditation, one has to keep one's body still and steady One has to breathe normally. When the breathing is normal, rising, falling is normal. But when the breathing becomes subtle, rising, falling becomes subtle. When the breathing becomes so subtle, it seems that rising, falling no longer takes place. When rising of the abdomen disappear, the noting mind that notes the rising will not take place. So in this example, rising and falling is the rupa that is the cause. The noting mind that notes the object is the nama that is the effect. So this example explains rupa materiality being the cause, nama mentality being the effect. When the rising falling is clear, one can note it easily. One can note the rising falling easily when the rising falling is clear. But the rising falling becomes more and more subtle gradually. So if one cannot see the rising falling, then one has to note the subtle rising falling with more energized mind. So when rising falling becomes subtle, one should not shift one's attention to some other object at first. So one has to note the subtle rising falling with more energized mind in order to see it clearly. When the breathing in and breathing out is strong, rising falling is strong. When the breathing becomes subtle, rising falling becomes subtle. When breathing becomes so subtle, rising falling also becomes very subtle. And if there is no breathing at all, rising falling will not arise at all. When the vipassana becomes mature, 
at the stage of Chitta Jhana, at the stage of fourth Jhana, there is no breathing at all. If there is no breathing at all, rising and falling does not take place at all. If rising and falling does not take place at all, yogi does not need to note it. So there are less objects to be noted if there is no rising and falling. If there is no rising and falling at all, the noting mind that notes rising and falling will not take place. So this is the example. Because there is no object rising and falling, which is the rupa materiality, the noting mind, which is nama, that notes rising and falling, does not take place. And to the yogi who practices respectfully, meticulously, one will understand this example through one's own practice. It will be atta pachaka, it will be direct experiential knowledge. And the yogi will be able to explain to the meditation teacher very clearly. If the yogi cannot report clearly, it shows that he or she does not know clearly. If the yogi cannot note rising falling or the other objects with aim and effort, then because the person's practice is not clear, his or her experience is not clear, if his or her experience is not clear, he or she will not be able to report clearly. So today, Saraji explained the Rupa materiality cause is giving rise to Nama mentality effect. And there are also other examples of cause and effects. By just giving one example, one will be able to understand the others. And in order to understand through one's own practice, yogi needs to know the object effectively, efficiently. And this will be all for today.